Welcome everybody. I'm Becky Pleasant. I work for the ECITB as their diversity champion, as well as my day job, um, which is uh, head of uh, nuclear skills uh, strategy. Um, and we're here today as part of a, a, a series of events looking at various aspects of inclusion and diversity over the next few weeks. And our focus this particular Killer week is on disability uh, and I think personally it's probably the topic that I've had least involvement with um, it's one that I'm very conscious that we need to be doing more about um, and I think actually slightly ironically the pandemic I think has probably brought that to the forefront even even more in my mind on the basis that all of a sudden people are working in, in environments which might be more suited um, to, to um, allowing more people um, from more backgrounds to participate healthily in the work environment um, so it's just starting to get us thinking a little bit more about what more we can do in that space but I'm sure all of that will come out in the in, in the discussion today. So I'm going to ask you to to start off with just introducing yourselves if that's okay and then we'll just ask some questions um, uh, around various topics. Um, important thing is, you know, you bring in your own experiences, and I'm really interested to hear um, both from you personally, but you in, in terms of employees of your own organisations, um, and and in, in many, both cases, I think leading um, diversity and inclusivity in your um, own organisations as well. So let's start off with Lisa. Do you mind just giving us a few, a couple of minutes about yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, hello to both of you. It's great to be with you. Um, so I'm Lisa Farrell, and I am president for culture and inclusion at Wood PLC. So essentially, my day job is about creating the best working environment for all of our employees and being an advocate for their voice. Um, so it's great to be talking about disability inclusion today. Um, I'd say it's probably one of the areas where we've got um, a lot more to do and a lot more to learn. So this conversation is really timely actually because it's going to be great to hear from both of you in terms of some of your experiences and what we can do. So um, I'm really looking forward to our time together. I am Terry Hargreaves. I'm one of the diversity and inclusion advisors at Sellafield Limited. Um, and yeah, professionally involved with this for the last year and a half because the diversity and inclusion team has only been a thing for the last year and a half. I mean, Sellafield's been working a lot around transforming our culture and, and doing work in diversity and inclusion space. And that kind of led to the necessity of this team. But I've actually worked for Sellafield for coming up to eight years. And prior to that, I was kind of involved in this side of things because um, during my employment time here, I was actually diagnosed as um, being on the autistic spectrum, which as a family and personally, I suspected and known about for years prior, but had never pursued a diagnosis until it started to impact me in the workplace. And thankfully, Sellafield, prior to the DNI team becoming a thing we already had quite a few employee-led support networks that were grown by members of our workforce who just saw a need and felt a commonality around that and actually the second employee-led support network ever established was the site autism support network which actually got rebranded to the nucleus support, autism support network so i've got to get their name right um and i got in touch with them to see if i could join because it was actually set up um, for parent, parent and primary carers of autistic people to come together around what they faced at work as carers. Um, so I wasn't sure as an autistic adult was their space for me and they welcomed me with open arms. I think at the time I was maybe the second or third autistic adult to join and then since then the numbers have increased because like many of our other support networks they do so much work raising awareness, upskilling and just talking and demystifying it. So I've been personally engaged with this kind of thing for, for quite a few years now, and I've got to see it from the bottom up and then with this role, seeing it from the top down. And and like Lisa said, we've still got a bit of a journey to go on um, around disability specifically, um, but we're, we're taking steps. And like you mentioned, Becky, one of the silver linings of the whole pandemic is it's kind of forced a lot of companies to work agile and be very adaptive in ways that benefit people with disabilities that previously if they'd asked for work from home days and the like they were denied it and now it's become almost the norm 
<laughs> Excellent. That's brilliant. Thank you. And you, you mentioned networks there. Lisa, do uh, Wood have networks? Um, and is there a disability network in, in Wood yet? So, yeah, we've got a number of networks um, at Wood. Um, and like Terry mentioned, a lot of them were very much bottom up, uh, employee led, and, and still are employee led. Um, um, and we have one that um, we started a couple of years ago, which was Action for Capability, which was intended for uh, disability inclusion. I would say that that network hasn't really gone anywhere and that's that's one of the things that we're exploring right now is that there are two active employees in it right now that's me and one of my colleagues from IT um, who continue to post content and try and get some some traction but it hasn't really taken off so we're exploring that one right now um, but one area that has really taken off in the last few months has been our other group which is neurodiversity at Wood okay. so really focusing in specifically on neurodiversity has really seemed to have taken taken a light, I think, within the organisation. Um, and it's a, it's a mixture of individuals who have come together. Some are parents of people who have had children potentially going through diagnosis right now or, or suspecting of diagnosis. Um, some are neurodivergent themselves and, and identify. And we, we've got people who um, have Asperger's, ADHD, and are on the, the autistic spectrum as well. Um, and then there are others who are just want to be allies and are trying to understand a little bit more. So I'm really excited about it. It's very much in its early days. Um, we haven't quite convinced them to turn it into a formal structure yet. It's very much just a community-based group at the moment. Um, all of our other networks are very much um, structured with action plans and terms of reference and sponsors, etc. I do think this one will get that way um, because there's enough passion around it. Um, so as I say, early days for us.